Kia ora guys, it's Brisinga Rise here. I just wanted to do another talking video today, which is why I'm dressed up nicely. I love this jacket. But for those of you who do not know, today is a very special and in some ways somber day because it is International Suicide Awareness Day. And for those of you who do not want to hear about this topic, you're welcome to click off, but this is going to be a very uplifting video, I promise. I'm not going to get it to go too dark, but I just wanted to talk about my experiences with it and some tips and tricks that I have to getting to the point where you can seek help and know that it's okay to seek help because you guys matter. And if you are feeling in any way like you don't, then just know that I'm here for you and that if you ever need to talk, I'm literally a message away and I will do whatever I can to help you because I've been there and I know. So I have complex post-traumatic stress disorder and I know a lot of you have been wondering what that entails and how dark it gets and if you've seen my Instagram you've probably seen me break down at least three times in the last week alone. It is a very hard thing to deal with because it's all to do with a childhood trauma that I experienced and I know a lot of people don't understand that post-traumatic stress disorder can hit people who have not been in wars or natural disasters. So. That's one of the things that is my next goal on this channel is to be able to open up a lot more about that and get you guys to think about it. But that's not what today is about. Today is talking about this special day and my experiences with the S word. So, in 2011 I was in a very, very dark place. My mother had decided to get with my ex-boyfriend who was my age at the time, so 15, 16, completely messed up, I know, but hey, that's my mother for you, and tomorrow's her birthday, so she can suck it. I have nothing to do with her anymore, I could not give a fuck what she does, but I do wish for retribution for what she did to me, but that's another story, and that's not something we're going to get into today. So, she tried to egg me on with what I wanted to do, which was to end my life. In 2011, I had two suicide attempts alone. In 2012 and 2013, there were two more. These are the ones that I consider my serious ones. I've had several others that I consider more half-hearted. They weren't really me wanting to die. They were more me just wanting to make the pain stop by tying a sash around my neck and pulling it as tight as I can until I couldn't feel anything. So, for those of you who say suicide is selfish, I agree. It is. But the sad thing is, is that at that moment, when you're, when you're in that time period, when you want to go, you're not thinking about the aftermath. You're thinking about the here and now. And more importantly, you're thinking about your family. But you might not be thinking, them, thinking of them in a way that is considered clear and concise and understandable to others. Because I'll tell you what, when I was in that place... God, it's still hard to talk about. Because I almost did, and I wasn't allowed to go to hospital, so. Bada boom, bada bang, that's what you do when you got a crap mother. But anyway, um. You're thinking about how much of a burden you are on them. You're thinking about how much of a joke you are to them. You're thinking about how the world would be so much better without you, and that they'll be fine without you because you're just a joke and they they will be okay and, and you know, you'll be okay because you won't be in pain anymore and they won't have to deal with that. And you will have no idea of the aftermath you will leave. Because for someone who has sort of woken up to the realization of just how nasty that side of things is when you get to that point, you do leave behind a lot of pain and the worst thing is, is that there will be no closure for those people. Um, I've talked about it in my sessions a lot, but, you know, you, you see people who have lost their sons and daughters, or, or their partner, their best friend to suicide, and they go, I wish I'd known, and it's like, there are signs there, but, you know, we don't tell you, because we don't want you to feel like we feel. We don't want to drag you down, and when you're in that mode, no one understands no one can understand how to get to that point until they've been to that point in time. And for me, getting to that point in time is still one of the things that haunts the crap out of me because I was gonna go. And if I had gone, I never would have gotten to do this. 56 subscribers is incredible. 
and here's to 75 because I plan on throwing a massive giant whipped cream pie in my face and then eating it because I like cream so but that's getting a bit ahead of ourselves so because you're not there after, you know once you're dead you're dead I don't know if there's an afterlife, I don't really care, but once you're dead, you're gone to them. You cannot come back, you cannot tell them, hey, everything's great on the other side, party, you know, and all this stuff, and I'm doing okay. You can't. And they live with that guilt of not being able to help you. I'm still alive, and I'm understanding that there is a lot of guilt in my family for what happened to me, and my sister, and them not understanding what happened, and them not understanding what we went through, and now their pain for it, you know, and it breaks my heart to see my auntie Leslie, who was absolutely freaking amazing, break down just about in the doctor's office, telling my doctor how guilty she feels that she did nothing to stop what happened to my sister and I. And I turned to her and said, well, we couldn't tell you. And the other thing was, we thought this was normal. You know, what we went through, we were told was normal. So we had nothing to compare it to. So, you know, even if we had told you, would you have believed us? So when you do get into that mode and the aftermath, and it, it can hit years down in the future, but you start to realize what kind of a chain reaction that would have had. You know, seeing the guilt on my family's faces now and not having them stick their head in the sand and go, it doesn't exist, it didn't happen, you weren't abused, you know, all that horrible stuff didn't happen with your mother, la la la, not listening. Now they're coming to accept it. And I keep thinking, God, if I had died because I was suffering so much, would they know? You know, would, would I be able to still make a difference? To be able to tell them, hey, it's not your fault? And the answer is no, because I would have been gone. So that's why I think suicide is selfish from their point of view. Because when we're in that mode, we're not thinking about them in that retrospect of what happens when they're left behind. We're just thinking about how pathetic and hopeless and stupid we are, and that we need to go because we're hurting everyone we care about. But that's not true. They want us around. So what can you do when you get in that mindset? Well, it's good to have someone to talk to, definitely. If you're feeling that way, I do encourage you to seek help. Seek professional help. It's hard, and you are allowed to be fussy, by the way. You do not have to go to the first counsellor someone chooses for you. You need to find someone you gel with. You can't just go up to someone and go, Help me, please. You're a counsellor. I don't care that I don't like you. Because the thing is, you won't be able to open up. So you are allowed to be fussy. Even if your parents or your kids guardians or caregivers or what are your friends even get annoyed at you because you are being so picky you need to be because this is someone you're going to tell your whole life story to this is someone that's going to help you so find someone that you like and do not be afraid to be picky i was picky and i'm very thankful i was because i found someone amazing and even though i've had to stop because she got pregnant and i'm still looking again now for another one to take her place it's the same sort of thing. You need to find someone you're comfortable with. Number two, do not be afraid to speak out to a family member. Even if they do not understand, just tell them you're struggling. If they don't understand, go to someone else you trust. And if all else fails, call a mental health line. I'm not kidding. They will help. And they will get you the help you need. If you don't want to go to hospital, you do not have to. It's a very scary time in there. They're not usually very nice. <laughs> They do put you on a watch, and that's not fun for anyone. And I know about it because a lot of my friends have gone through it and have told me some pretty horrible horror stories. So if you don't want to go to the hospital, don't. But remember to get help. And if all else fails, if no one else is there for you, then you contact me. I don't care if I take a while to reply back. I will, because I will think of something to say. And I will even, on your behalf, if you want me to, tell your family how you're struggling. Because I've been there and I know. And I know how to help in some ways. My experience will not be the same as yours. Your experience might be a lot better than mine. And I hope for your sake it is. Because mine wasn't fun. But it's never going to be a competition. So, what can you do when you start to feel that way? After you've sought help and people are starting to help you. Find a hobby that you enjoy. 
It doesn't even have to be anything sensical. It can be painting World of Warcraft little, little characters. It can be, I don't know, going and playing Dungeons and Dragons with a couple of friends. In my case, it is horse riding. I went horse riding again on the weekend and the joy I feel despite the pain in my legs because that horse was wide as hell and I was like, I'm going to be getting half. It was wonderful because I didn't shake. And that's the first time in years that I have not shook when I got on a horse, which was fantastic. And I did my first road ride. And I felt so good after two years off. So find something that doesn't make sense to anyone else. Hell, start a YouTube channel. Just sit down and talk to a camera if you have to. Find something that no one else understands, even if it's going down to the playground and playing on the swings. I don't know. I've done that. Do artwork. Do something that makes you happy. Call someone up that you haven't talked to for ages. But do something. And if your friends turn up and they want to drag you outside, even if you're feeling down and you think, oh god, I'm going to crash in front of them and, you know, I'm, I'm not going to feel very comfortable and I'm just going to, like, hug myself like this because I'm really insecure and I don't want anyone else to know how I feel. It is okay. It is okay to feel that way. But go out with them. Because I guarantee you they'll take your mind off things. Your friends really do become your family, especially the ones you really, really can get to know and trust. The ones that you would call in a heartbeat and no matter anywhere in the world that they are, they'd come running if they could. Those are the people that you need in your life and you need to love and trust. And they love and trust you. So even if it's hard to go out and experience life and you're nervous and you're afraid, because believe me, I've been there. I freaking lived in Adelaide and my friend Astrid had to drag me out nearly every night. And then as she got more into homework, because I was failing Bradford at the time, I was like, fuck it. I'm bringing you out because you are not going to get bored and you are not going to break down because you can't go places and do things you want to do. And that's what I did for her and that's what she did for me. And I know for a fact that if I called up Astrid and said, help me, everything's going to hell, I can't deal with this, help me out, I'm sorry, I think I'm going to do something stupid, she would call me back and we would sit and talk for hours on the phone. And believe me, if you've got friends around that will do that for you, do it. Definitely equestrian, you know, is great. It is so good for your health. It is so good for your cardiovascular, you know, your heart health. It's great for mental health. It's just great to be around an animal that knows and respects you. I mean, Rusty, God bless, I'll put a photo of her somewhere in this video, maybe at the end, put her head in my hands and just keep breathing on me. And the feeling I got from that was you are loved and I am here for you. You know, I can see you're hurting. And you're struggling with life and life isn't very fair on you and you've got all these amazing dreams and it's so hard for you to make them come true but i'm here and that's the same thing i want to get across to you guys i am here for you i might have started this channel as a venting thing hell i might have started this channel to maybe get to a thousand to get off wins but first and foremost this channel has always been to grow a community where people like me can come and talk because I want to be able to help. And more importantly, I want to help people live. And it's hard. I'm hashtag living with CPTSD, you know, and I always will be living with it. All right. It's never, ever going to go away. I'm going to get reprieves from it, but there will always be something that triggers me. Thankfully, I know how to deal with my triggers, but sometimes they can hit me pretty hard and it can be very difficult. The other thing that is the most important thing about this is smash the stigma around it. If you want to help people who are struggling, even if you're not, not in the way that people are when they're gonna die, when they want to go, you can do something for them and you can do something for yourself. Because if you can put yourself in that situation, most important thing though is do not become the victim again. That is really important. You can help them as much as you can, but if you feel like it's getting to you, then you pull back and say, I'm going to go and get you professional help. I'm going to find someone who can help you further than me. Because the last thing that anyone wants that has a mental illness is to drag someone else down. And we can. And it's no one's fault. It's not the person's fault who is struggling with it. It's not the person's fault who is trying to help. It's just that sometimes learning about what someone has been through can be a lot on the human mind. And that's okay. 
And it's okay to not be a-okay. Trust me, I'm not a-okay. I might go, I'm doing great today, but in reality, you know, I'm getting my ass kicked most nights because I'm stuck in a house. And now I've got something to do on the weekends, I'm gonna feel better. But I am so scared that the horse that I'm looking at for the International Thoroughbred Retirement Program isn't going to be the one that they're going to choose for me because there are so many amazing people out there who can ride better than me, who have more money than me. But I doubt that they will ever be able to love the way that I do. Because even though this is getting off topic from the suicide thing, losing a parent, whether it be to an illness to death, or someone who just doesn't give a flying fuck about you anymore, hurts. And it's okay to miss them. Believe me, I miss my fucking mother. And I hate myself for that because she is a monster. But believe me, having someone motherly around like my auntie is phenomenal. Because I know I can just call her up if I'm struggling and she'll be down here with bells on. Wanting to take me out to her place or maybe going out for a coffee or something. And that's really important. It is great to have a support system. Because guys, you are not alone in this. And you will never be alone. I honestly hope that one day in the future, people like us won't have to struggle with this. That an International Suicide Day won't have to exist for people to want to sit down and talk about this and help one another. It's a real taboo subject, and I know it is. I've had to deal with it my whole life, but that's okay. And it is definitely okay to struggle, and it is definitely okay to cry. I cry more times than I can count. I could probably cry on command if someone asked me to. All I have to do is watch a sad movie and I'll be bawling my eyes out. And I can cry over the smallest of things, like the frustration of not being able to play the new Spider-Man game, or playing Arkham soon, or anything like that. Because I don't have the money, and I do not have the equipment, and that's really frustrating. But it's gonna happen. It's just gonna take time. So it's okay. And just always, 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 always remember that I am here for you. I am one message away. I am one comment away. Holy hell, if you're in Auckland, you know, I really would be there for you if you needed me to. Just know that no matter what happens, no matter how much of a bad day you have, same with me, that you can come here and we can enjoy a game together. That's why I want to collaborate with a lot of you guys. I want to play a game that makes you happy. I want to do something with you that makes you happy. And then maybe it'll make me happy too, I don't know, but it'll be fun. So for all of you who have been touched by suicide, who have lost someone or who have tried to do it themselves, you are not alone. And it is not your fault. And it will never be your fault. And I want to give you a big hug right now, but it'll be really awkward because you'll just see my boobs. <laughs> so I can't really do that. But a big old hug from me to you like this. Big hug. Because I know what you're going through. And I tell you what. You will get through this. You will be okay. And you will be able to look back on this time with a smile and go, holy fuck, at least I'm not there. So... Hold that person tight that you're worried about. Give them a call. Just tell them you care. You don't even have to tell them with words. Just call them up and go, hey, how you doing? You know, make a joke. Talk to them on Facebook. Even though we have truly lost the art of conversation in this day and age, talk to them. Spend some time with them. Ask them if they want to meet up. If they go, no, say tough shit, you're coming. Just give them a little bit of tough love on occasion. But know when to put it there and when not to. Anyway, I've nearly babbled on for 20 minutes about this. But I just want you guys to know I'm here. I will continue to be here. I will do whatever I can to make this world a better place for those of us who are struggling. And I will continue to smash the stigma around mental health so that one day you guys out there will be able to open up about it and talk about it and be happy and it not be a big deal anymore because wouldn't that be something special 
Anyway. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't already, subscribe down below and join the madness. Big old hugs to you. Oh, big squeezes. I want to give you a big hug. And I will see you guys in the next video game. Which might be a collab with my good friend Brayden tonight. Fingers crossed. He's awesome. Gatitiano, guys. Have a wonderful day.